Good morning, grasshoppers. Let's do a, a quick note for Chess Informant and Informant 155 as we head into this study for Max Oiva on Max Oiva's birthday. Just a note that with one E4, we're going to have to face all sorts of semi-open games for the most part. And probably the most annoying semi-open game that an E4 player might face is the French defense, because this requires a significant amount of pawn play in addition to peace play. Therefore, in general, against the French defense, which is one of the four main defenses that attack the E4 pawn, basically I've said before that there are three ways of dealing with the center. You either hold the center, you either attack the center, such as the Alicant defense, the Scandinavian defense, or the French or the Karl Kahn, both of which prepare D5 to attack it in deferred fashion. So you're either attacking the center, holding the center, or you're giving up the center. And after the move knight to c3, which is probably the smartest move uh, in, uh, in the starting out territory for the most part, because you need to get your pieces out. You don't need to get bogged down in heavy pawn maneuvers here. For example, the advanced variation for as simple as it may seem, offers black an instant plan of bearing down on the base of the pawn structure. Whereas against knight to c3, black cannot play the move c5 because after the move e takes d5, e takes d5, the pawn on d5 comes under tremendous amounts of pressure, being isolated and weak. So therefore, even though it worked out in an immortal game by Frank Marshall, against Lewitsky, where they showered the board with gold pieces with his immortal uh, um, queen to g3 move. In this particular case, today, the sh there's a little bit of a cloud over the move bishop to b4, and against bishop to b4, I usually recommend a plethora of peace play maneuvers, such as uh, knight on g to e2, maybe even Alakine's bishop to d2, or you could even wheel out Fisher's early queen to g4 in some cases. But on the whole, locking up the center now means that black is going to give away his good bishop for, for a knight. The pluses and minuses of this are, uh, are debatable, but in general, in contemporary, uh, in contemporary play, getting our pieces out is absolutely essential. Now, personally, I prefer e5, knocking the knight right away. And once again, you can head into peace play there with knight f3 on the sixth move, the Steinitz variation. Or you can play Max Oiva's move. Now, today is May 20th, Max Oiva's birthday. So I promised myself and the viewers earlier that I would do a, a short Max Oiva video on an E4 opening repertoire as played by him against the famous Geza Maroxi, the Hungarian master most famous for playing against the Maroxi bind in his first encounter. I'm not entirely sure how Maroxi's name became attached to it. Perhaps it was the analysis he did afterwards, but Maroxi himself played against the Maroxi bind. From what I recall in his first encounter, I have to do a bit more research on this, but very commonly here, black gives up the center and makes life a little bit easier for white to play, taking advantage of the pin on the knight to the queen recapture with the knight, white has freedom of movement. But in the game today, black plays the old classical defense instead of the counter-attacking McCutcheon variation, which is another variation that I like to recommend for young players to experiment with, to really benefit from 
attack and counterattack, basically attacking and counterattacking. For instance, after e5, h6, and today bishop to e3 is all the rage. The hardest move, the main main line to find is bishop d2, only because after bishop takes d2, sorry, bishop takes c3, recapture with the pawn. And in this particular case, the reason why I might do this is to prevent any counterplay. And there's only like one trick that one has to worry about in the McCutcheon. And that is either after uh, g6 or king to f8, both moves are needed to guard the g7 square. Should white play the move bishop to d3, uh, black does have an equalizing trick in reaching an end game with queen to g5 check. Now, this may not be to everyone's taste. I have played it myself on both sides. I have not necessarily allowed it because after the move, uh, queen to g4, king to f8 or g6, in general, I still prefer the move h4, especially perhaps against king to f8, h4, perfectly reasonable move developing pieces, rook lift up and over. And we'll see the same thing occur in our game today as we back up to the classical variation where Max Oiva's opponent, Geza Maroxi, plays bishop e7. And my very first encounter with the classical French as a 2000 rated player in the state high school championships when I was young, I essayed the move 6-H4 against the state's strongest player. And I took him out on board one with a draw. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to press for a win. I ended up having to force a perpetual check. And my teammate, who I'm, whom I was unable to play, won the tournament by skating past us with a perfect score because I was unable to play against him. Not that I was jealous, of course, but for the most part. Now, the logical move in this particular case after bishop takes, queen takes, can be met in two different ways. Um, first and foremost, there is knight to h3, and this is what I... Uh, grew up with for the most part along with queen to g4 and after the move king to f8 there are a few tricks in this particular position involving uh, knight f4 f4 and or simply just castle and queen side i also caught a very young dimitri schneider uh the cfo of chessable with the move after he played c5 i played bishop takes e7 and he accidentally played queen e7 opening up his dark squares for an attack and i believe it was in an amateur team championship which was somewhat important to say the least but in reality the international master dimitri schneider had to answer with uh, king takes e7 and barnacle and these positions aren't all that easy to play. The next most important move to know about in this particular position might be a move like a6, preparing the move c5. But needless to say, in this particular game, after the move h4, Maroxi has the daunting courage to actually play the move castles. And this is really, really asking for it. Suggestions for white? We are going to do some candidate moves for white. Good morning, Ron, or good evening, Ron, as I should say. Candidate moves for white. Now, I've already given you several clues as to what these moves might be. We could be going after the weakened dark squares on the queen side. We could be going after the weakened light square toward h7, or we could be going directly after the g7 square. How hard is it? Ron, it's almost midnight. What are you doing awake, man? It's great to see you, sir. 
hopefully the mic and everything are working. Ron has a new hype popcorn emote in the chat. Pegasus Sway said, an H YouTube movie. <laughs> yes, you can watch me on YouTube on your Curve TV. So, Night H3, believe it or not, is not in the top five moves in this position. Uh, objectively, the best move is Queen to G4 objectively when black has the option to play king ha however Maroxi chose the third best move which is certainly a viable alternative going after the h7 square after all this pawn will be immune from capture and lastly we can attempt to overwork the queen and the bishop by going after the c7 pawn and in this particular example we are threatening bishop takes e7 and possibly knight takes c7 going after the rook, which black can defend in a number of ways by forcing the issue or by developing rather rapidly with knight to c6. After all, the, the rook will be able to move away and the queen will be able to cause more trouble than it's worth. So needless to say, Max Oiva went for bishop to d3 against Baroxy's 8-7 square. I believe that I might have transposed these colors. And as we already know, the thematic move c5 could lead to inordinate amounts of trouble. One more time for candidate moves for white. Interactive study is the only way to become better, testing yourself against the moves of good or great players and having an objective view of what the best move is always helps as well. Earlier today in Ben Johnson's Perpetual Chess Podcast, Figures I cannot way. recall the coach, Set. trainer he was interviewing NF. for the latest one. Night F3 is possible but not in the top five moves so far. Try to think in terms of threes though. Think in terms of threes, like throwing three darts toward a bullseye. Uh, the Perpetual Chess Podcast interview, the most recent one, I think it's episode 330 or 331, referred to the move by move books by uh, every man. And those are excellent Set. books. QHF. Nicely done. Queen h5 and f4 are in the top three. The only two moves that really theoretically yield an advantage are knight h3 and the best move queen h5 was played by Max Oiva. With the move g6, Max Oiva does press forward with queen h6 and Maroxi makes a failed attempt to escape with the rook to e8. Better might have been to strive for immediate counterplay with C takes D4. And it's quite incredible to believe that White's best move leads to a little bit of a transposition to the game after Knight F3. The idea being that we're gonna capture on E7 and play Knight to G5 in a hurried fashion. So, as it turns out, Maroxy makes an attempt to give his king some room. And after bishop takes e7, rook takes e7 would have been a required follow-up. Maroxy plays the most logical move, queen to e7. Once again, we could be suffering on the lights, on the dark squares on the queen side. But instead, Maroxy overlooks the strength of the best move in the possession played by Max Oeva, h5. After all, this is the point. He does, however, manage to find the best move, barnacling on the king side. To barnacle is a New York East Coast chess expression from the Charlie Hurtan, Joel Benjamin, um, Mark Ginsburg era, Fedorowicz era, 
Mike Road era, Michael Wilder era, for the most part, those grandmasters. And candidate moves for white in this position once more. Candidate moves for white. Max Oeva, perhaps the only world champion to be the president of the World Organizing Chess Body FIDE. Gary Kasparov has run for it. Nigel Short has run Pegasus for it. Sway. Said. NHG. NH3, Castles Queenside, and G4. It's fascinating how everybody seems to miss out on this. However, um, Knight H3 is a perfectly objective choice, I imagine. However, the best move, which is quite hard to believe in my mind, is the very slow f4 however castle and queen side being the second best move and knight f3 the move played by max oiva remember they had to find these moves all on their own are all comparably of equal value now whether or not whether or not um black plays c4 or not the attack will continue on the king side so, for example, Max Oiva probably anticipated c4 with bishop e2. However, c takes d4 was played by Maroxi. And without a care in the world, a very young, in 1921, he is 14 years away from becoming world champion. Max Oiva plays the move knight to g5, following through on his assault. Now, we might wonder what's going to happen after D takes C3, because it wasn't played in the game. But Knight takes H7 is going to rip open with the threat of winning the queen and an almost unstoppable mate on G7, ripping open the king. We can only cross and cover in this manner, and then we're gonna strip him of more defenses in this manner. And now already we're threatening checkmate on h8 after knight f6 check. So it really doesn't matter what he attempts to do here. He is getting his queen back. So knight takes knight to f6 check isn't quite so yeah, good. But all we have to do is just Ted. get out of get, get out of danger. Good morning, David. How are you, man? Good to see you. And all the threats remain of checkmating on the back rank and winning the queen in that particular position. So as I mentioned before, Maroxi, with his inimitable sense of danger, does not take on c3 and instead plays the best move. Knight on b to d7 and white follows through as we just mentioned with knight takes h7. Now the idea being that this square is going to be covered by knight takes e5 and it looks like he has just enough defenses coming across h takes g6 knight on f takes g6 perhaps not the best move maybe knight takes d3 check would have been more fitting but we wouldn't have had the short brilliancy that we have without the move knight f6 bishop takes g6 and after knight takes g6, candidate moves for white. How have you been, David? I haven't seen you in some time. Good to see you, man. I promised this short earlier in the day before we had a little bit of uh, sad news in the family. So we had to take care of some things that were absolutely necessary. Max Oiva does find the best move in this position, mind you. So basically, 
you're not entirely looking for the best move, but you're looking for all the possible moves that you can throw at your opponent in this case. And we will see why this particular move Pegasus causes so many problems. Said. N G O O O N B. Absolutely, Knight to B5. Originally, when I uh, when this position popped up in analysis, Knight to B5 is a very obvious continuation, since there's no way that this queen can try to go after the knight and win it, because Knight F6 is checkmate. And at the same time, after Bishop takes, Knight takes. Castle and queen side absolutely is decisive. So let's just give those moves some credit. Knight to b5, castle and queen side, and of course the very solid looking knight e2 as was played in Fisher versus Benko in the 22 move, 22 move short periods that he once played with the blockade on f6. However, the move that Forces checkmate in short order, g4. And now, of course, we get to see that there is no stopping the move g5, followed by knight to g5, knight to f6 check, and g takes f6 with mate on g7. It's uh, it's a very slow haul. Black can try to distract from it, and after the move, d takes c3. White just has one more move to take care of in this position. Candidates for white before the hammer finds its nail. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time, if you're watching this at a later date. The Alakine Chatard attack, with uh, which was initiated with 6H4, has always been a rather... Ginger, I love. Said, isn't that Max Yui? It is Max Oeva, and it is his birthday today. You'll find uh, more information on sweet. him in the stream Sad. announcements on Discord. G. Or on Ginger Twitter. I love. Said. Uh -huh. And of course, you can watch this and other videos in our instructional specials. This one being a 1E4 opening repertoire, which you'll find on YouTube. Last call for candidate moves. The most logical move being a product of our previous suggestions as uh, Pegasus has pointed out with castles. And of course we'd love to play G5. I'm positive that G5 should work. This position is just so decisive that after C takes B2, we may need to castle because we can't allow any counterplay. Queen E5. Queen B4 check, Queen E4 check, etc. and so on. Ginger I love. Said. Oi John, I came here to say cuz I love you lol have to go got to go, it's PM here. 11 PM. 11 PM almost in London. Midnight in Sweden. Ginger is love, thank you so much. Cheers and shall. So needless to say, white did castle instead of playing G5. Ginger I love. Said. Birmingham. Birmingham, England. Yes. And after castle at queenside, actually Maroxi gave up. Uh, he did not attempt to stretch it out any further with uh, connecting his rooks or doing any form of uh, pushing it off after 
C takes B2, Ginger check, I king to B1. Said. C -Y -A -C -Y -A. Bishop D7, G5, and it's inevitable that we're going to face this. So capturing with check holds off only for a short period of time. Knight to G5, threatening queen to F, 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 queen to H7 and queen to F7 mate. And even if he does try to come off this way, we get to see the ever so uh, important opening of the G file with G4, G5 with Rook on H, Rook on D to G1. And Evan, thank you so much, Ginger is love. Now, for those wishing to see the finish, basically, after the move 94, we can only uh, throw some spite checks in to try to prevent it from being made. One more spite check to prevent it from being made. One more spite check to prevent it from being made. And at long last, Queen H8, forcing checkmate in two moves. Pegasus sway. Said. Bullet move. <laughs> Bullet moves, exactly. Attempting to dirty flag the opponent. Absolutely. What more or less do we have than to try to dirty flag our opponent? It has become a part of... Uh, a part of the modern chess experience. <clears throat> Needless to say, thank you everyone for being here. Hopefully this hasn't been too long. We've kept it less than 30 minutes. That's all I ask. Cheers and ciao. And we will raid. If anyone suggests anyone. Ah, Lonely Winter. Pegasus Sway said THX bye bye Thank you Ron Let's give Ron another shout out Chess Informant 155 another shout out Whoops Chess Informant 155 the latest And please enjoy this new streamer. She deserves all of your attention. Cheers and ciao, everyone. Thank you so much for being here.